next year. Turn on the slow beat. Not in recent history had a team so dominated its sport like the 1985 Chicago Bears. Three, two, one. The dream is reality. The Chicago Bears are world champions of football. They were world champions in the truest sense. NFL ambassadors off to London on a preseason mission. Where we go, Cheerio. Hello. Big William rode the double-deckers and gazed at Big Ben. A country once governed by Prime Minister Harold Wilson met Defense Minister Otis Wilson while Walter Payton ran into rock star Phil Collins. Hello, Walter. Walter. How are you? Nice to meet you, man. Pleasure's all mine. Ah, okay. Who's that? That's my son, Simon. Hi, Simon. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> Can you sign his bowl for him? Be glad to. Yeah. All right. Thank you. See, and no wonder they can hold the bowl. Look at the hands. <laughs> After winning over the hearts of Londoners as well as the game against Dallas, it was time to pop back across the pond and defend their Super Bowl title. Pressured to repeat and targeted by opponents, the Bears would be severely tested. to the left side. Glutie takes rolling out left, being chased by Browner. Stops and heaves the left side of the end zone for Peyton over the shoulder. If there's one thing tougher than winning a world championship, that's defending one. But in 1986, the Bears won 14 games, the most ever by a defending champion. They opened the season by winning six in a row and closed it out with another seven straight victories. Along the way, four different quarterbacks guided them. Key injuries plagued them. And in the end, they came up short of their dream to repeat as world champions. Although it wasn't for lack of effort. As Mike Ditka stated, we may have lost the battle, but we haven't lost the war. We will be back. In 1985, Chicago broke camp on a mission. With a reputation, that mission would be even tougher to accomplish in 1986. You're going to have trouble getting off the ball, then keeping your lane. It's another year, and it's going to be tough. Everybody's going to be shooting for the Bears. So we have to tighten our belts a little bit and just, you know, bear down and go get them. The sleds were hit. London was conquered. And on opening day, the Bears rang in 86 with a dramatic exhibition of big plays against Cleveland. Look out. 20, got an opening. 25, tripped up across the 30. Breaks a tackle, 35, 40 down the right side. He may go all the way. He's going to go all the way to the 20, to the 15, ah. to the 5. Touchdown! And the Bears are on the board in electrifying fashion. In the slot left side is Webster Slaughter. Kozar lost hey.
Jim McMahon was forced out of action in the fourth quarter, but ultimately Mike Tomzak and Matt Suey landed the knockout punch. Suey the little setback, Tomzak marks out the signals, give to Suey, starting to the left, cuts back toward the middle, hey, 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 tackle hey, the hey. for the touchdown! Touchdowns by the special teams, the defense, and the offense key to 41-31 victory. But the following week versus Philadelphia, touchdowns would be hard to come by against an old buddy named Brian. Keep going. Oh, no. Maury Buford's booming punts helped Chicago win the important battle of field position, not only in this game, but all season long. Just as the play of Chicago's truly special teams aided them throughout the year. In overtime, the special teams won it as Dave Durison forced a fumble that Vesty Jackson recovered, setting the stage for Kevin Butler. Butler with the arm extended, and here is the snap, the placement made, the kick by Butler. And... The Bears have defeated the Philadelphia Eagles 13 to 10. Against Green Bay, Steve Fuller and Keith Ortigo spearheaded a come from behind 25 to 12 win for Chicago's third straight victory. After three hard fought triumphs, the Bears buried the Bengals for their fourth straight. McMahon was back. He scored on his own, hooked up with Peyton for another, and found Willie Galt deep for a 21-0 first quarter lead. Peyton Malone set back, McMahon steps to the pocket, rainbowing the left side, going hey, for hey. Willie Galt! He's, He's got, got it there! Oh. At the 15, 10, 5, oh. touchdown! All right. The defense picked off five passes, logged four sacks, and held Cincinnati to 60 yards rushing, while Thomas Sanders closed out a 44-7 rump in an undefeated September. Five in Chicago territory. And off Sanders finds the hole up the left side, down the left side line. 30 to the 40, to the 45, 50. He's going all the way. To the 30, to the 20, to the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. 75-yard run. The Minnesota Vikings outscored everyone in the NFC last season. In week five, they were shut down and shut out. The Bears won for the 20th consecutive time behind McMahon rolling to their fifth straight win, 23 to nothing. Powered by five first half sacks and a touchdown run by Dennis Gentry, the Bears ran over Houston 20 to seven. With a spotless six and zero record, the Bears had picked up right where they left off. There were many reasons for their dominant start. One was the offensive line. It begins with all pro center Jay Hilgenberg, number 63, as the Bears led the entire NFL in rushing for a record fourth straight year. Hilgenberg guards Tom Thayer, number 57, Mark Bortz, and Kurt Becker were battering Rams up the middle. All pro Jim Covert stood up defensive end and Keith Van Horn helped give Bear quarterbacks the safest pass pocket in the NFC. Though often sidelined, Jim McMahon started in six Bear victories. And Chicago won seven times behind Mike Tomzak. Veteran Steve Fuller was a willing and able backup. Willie Gall turned in his best year ever, catching scoring passes from all four quarterbacks, including Doug Flutie by season's end. A rotating quarterback derby in the absence of receiver Dennis McKinnon lessened the effectiveness of the passing game. But possession receiver Keith Ortigo and home run hitter Willie Galt were a pair that could be counted on. Another consistent pair were tight ends Tim Reitman, number 80, and Emery Moorhead, both sure-handed third-down targets. Summer camp and the preseason will ultimately determine who will be next year's starting quarterback. 
But there's one bear whose job is certain. A man with little left to prove. Gentry in motion to the right side. It is a second down and one from the 26. Give to Walter. He's got a 15,000 yards as he takes it up the middle across the 30 to the 35-yard line. Walter Payton has just crossed the 15,000-yard plateau and the way he's going. 18,000 seems like it's just around the corner. Against the Eagles, number 34 established a new mark and promptly achieved another. Morehead on the wing, right side, long count by Tom Jack. Morehead in motion to the near side, hand off to Peyton Lee. Yes, yes. Touchdown! 100 rushing touchdown in the illustrious career of Walter Payton, third yeah. player ever to gain 100 in touchdowns rushing. Illustrious indeed. And after 12 seasons, Walter Payton, at the age of 32, still played like a hungry rookie. For the tenth time, Peyton rushed for over a thousand yards. He now has over 16,000 and finishes off every run as only he can. His statistics have assured him a place in the Hall of Fame. His determination has assured him a place in the heart of every football fan. Peyton has started 168 straight games, a true testament to his remarkable dedication and conditioning. As usual, he was the man. But this season, there were others capable of sharing the burden. Everybody has an equal uh, approach to it. Dennis Gentry, Calvin Thomas, or Thomas Sanders, you put them in there, and we don't even miss a beat. Many big league fullbacks are merely strong lead blockers or short yardage specialists. Matt Suey does that, and a great deal more. He burrows for big gains, low to the ground, legs churning like pistons. A series or two later, he comes up with an acrobatic one-hand grab. But most importantly, fullbacks are counted on at the goal line. Sui is at his toughest in precisely those situations. In Thomas Sanders, the Bears have more than a runner who can afford Peyton a breather, as he averaged over eight yards a carry with five touchdowns. Dennis Gentry and number 33 Calvin Thomas distinguished themselves on special teams and in the Bear backfield, joining a talented group of runners who totaled 2,700 yards on the ground, the best in the NFL. A new face counted on for the future was rookie Neil Anderson, who showed signs of why he was a first-round draft pick. Depth and desire had them undefeated, but in the season's seventh week, the march finally faltered. Against Minnesota, Mike Ditka saw something quite foreign to him on the scoreboard. An opponent had more points than his Bears. Two weeks later, the Rams' Mike Lansford drilled a 50-yarder with seconds left, and the Bears had suddenly lost two out of three. But Chicago had just what it needed to right themselves. Bear defense. Under new defensive coordinator Vince Tobin, there were different wrinkles and different terminology, but some constants, too like the intensity of middle linebacker Mike Singletary. I want to make sure that the guy on the other side of the ball realizes that I'm going to give him all I've got and realize that I wasn't trying to hurt him and go back to the huddle and say, I don't want to go back that way. I don't ever want to do that again. That's the impact that I would like to leave. Number 50 delivers hits that cause his contact lenses to pop out. He blitzes, covers wideouts one-on-one, -on -one, 
and never takes the wrong step. You must earn his respect. Dan Hampton is one of the few who has. You ever seen True Grit? John Wayne. That's, that's Dan Hampton. Love to play football the way it's supposed to be played. And anytime you look out there on the field when the game is over, the guy's got the most tape on him, the most blood on him, and snot and everything else, you're looking at Dan Hampton. First time Pro Bowler Steve McMichael finally was recognized. William Perry became a wrecking ball of a defensive tackle. And sturdy 12 year veteran Mike Hartenstein set a club record for most games played. The Bear defense has a wealth of talent. An army of single minded all pros like Richard Dent. Richard's always making big plays, whether he's sacking the quarterback or creating fumbles, whatever it is. Richard Dent is the guy. Dent is strictly big play, and he led the team in sacks for the third straight year. But this season, big play honors must go to another. Wilbur Marshall scored a pair of touchdowns and intercepted five passes, the most by a Bear linebacker in 10 years. Quite simply, he was everywhere. Add eight sacks by Otis Wilson, and the Bear D compiled 62, the most in the conference. In the secondary, Gary Fensick broke Richie Pettibone's interception record by picking off his 38th pass, and his 1,110 tackles make him the busiest bear of all time. Rookie Vesty Jackson improved with each game. While in his best season ever, cornerback Mike Richardson intercepted a career-high seven passes. Number 22, Dave Durison pounded his way to his second straight Pro Bowl and led all NFL defensive backs with seven sacks. The Chicago Bear defense, perhaps the best unit ever assembled. A unit that crushed seven straight opponents on the way to their third straight division title. It began with a 23-3 beating of Tampa Bay. Mike Tomczak sparkled in his finest performance as a bear. And the defense allowed but a field goal. It was on the road again to Atlanta. The defense buried the Falcons, while Tomczak and Emory Moorhead connected on an 85-yard play that keyed a 13-10 win. The Bears were finding ways to win. And one of the best was when they didn't have the ball. The Packers were next to fall. They give a third and six Green Bay. Long count by Randy Wright. He takes, hands it off. Seven times they would come from behind to win. The mark of a champion. Such was the case against Pittsburgh in an overtime thriller. Kevin Butler on the field goal try. Here it is, a high snap. Butler gets it down. Butler pokes it to the upright. Jam and it's <laughs> Kevin Butler wins it in overtime. There's 13, Steelers 10. Shotgun formation for Mike Thompson. Here's the snap from Hilgenberg. Tom Zach steps hey, up. Hey, 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 hey. Quarterback Brian Dunn. Let's go! Mike Tomzak and Doug Flutie each ran, handed off, and threw for touchdowns in Chicago's fifth consecutive win. Tampa Bay was lucky to score. Very lucky. Steve Young ducks in under his center, takes the snap. He's straight back. He looks to throw. Now, fire away!
afford to hand over free touchdowns when you're blowing out your opponent. And the Bears had the last laugh when Lou Barnes turned only his third return ever into an 85-yard score. The offense exploded in a 48-14 route. But the following week, again the attack went into hiding. On a Monday night in Detroit, Matt Suey scored their only touchdown. But thanks to the defense and Kevin Butler, the Bears won with four seconds remaining. Here it is, Blake the kick is up and it is gone! The Chicago Bears have come from behind for a 16-13 victory. In the season finale, the Cowboys were overrun 24-10 as Vince Tobin's defense established an NFL record by allowing the fewest points in a 16-game season and Doug Flutie lit up the Texas sky. 22-yard line, Chicago territory. Single back offense, paint the load, set back. Flutie looking to the air. Flutie with time. Floats it. Rainbow and right oh, hey. oh, 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 oh. All right. The rush is on. Flutie scrambling. Hey, hey, hey. Willie in the deep corner. Oh, oh, oh. The left side of the end Willie got it. Take that. Seven straight victories. And it was on to the playoffs. Now look. Kickoff return. Get in here. All you worked for since June is on the line. Let's go middle cross and stick it right where we need to do it. Middle cross, go! Go! January at Soldier Field. The time and place where playoff opponents were shut out in 1985. But the Washington Redskins would prove to be more than a worthy opponent a year later. Flutie and Galt helped the Bears keep pace, but in the end, turnovers and the Jay Schrader to Art Monk connection closed the curtain on Chicago's season. Ryan the long setback. Schrader looking over, Bears show a blitz up front, and here they come. Schrader rolling right, bumps once, throws the right side of the end zone, wide open, Art Monk, touchdown! The Redskins will advance for the Chicago Bears season certainly filled with their share of adversity and challenges has come to an end with a 14-3 record and it ends in the divisional playoffs in the NFC. It's survival of the fittest. It's a challenge. You make a commitment. You're either better than the other guy or he's better than you. Every play. I learned a long time ago that if you want to be good, you beat the other guy. You beat him physically, you beat him mentally, you beat him uh, uh, condition-wise. That's that's got to be foremost in your mind that you can play harder and you can play longer than the other guy and in the end if you can do those things you should come out on top the Chicago Bears have been world champions they know what it takes to be the best there is much to prove and achieve and in 1987 there's every reason to believe that Chicago will be back Come to win. Though in this up and down roller coaster type season, the Bears and Redskins meet today for the right to face the Minnesota Vikings and play host to the NFC Championship. Go Bears, let's go! Let's go, Chicago! You know what this is for, like we said before. It's for the World Championship starting right now. Let's go, special. Kick it to the side and go. Come on, Jimmy, come on! McKinnon in motion to the near side. Here's a quick game. Peyton is in the slot on the left side, and McMahon takes, he's back to the throw, sets up short, he's the right yeah. side, touchdown! Ron Morris, touchdown! There was an eerie feeling of deja vu for the Chicago Bears. For the second year in a row, Washington was their playoff opponent. Once again, the freezing face of Soldier Field was the proving ground for a game of high stakes, sharp edges, and revenge. Might makes right could have been the motto of both teams. Two heavyweights standing toe-to-toe, -to -toe, landing and absorbing blow after blow. Chicago may have outmuscled and outhip the Redskins, but once again, they could not outscore them. The Bears lost 21-17, but even as Washington hurdled their way to a world championship, 
Chicago was placing the chip back on its shoulder, intent that 1988 will be a year to bear down. The Monday night opener. The 86 champion New York Giants versus the 85 champion Chicago Bears. Super Bowl 21 and a half. Summoned a ferocity remindful of Super Bowl 20. And Mike Tomzak calmly found the open man. It was truly a blowout. McKinnon inside the 10. Dennis makes a play on it in the 6. Cutting left to the 10. Good move. Hey! teams rise to great occasions and the Bears were breathtaking in their 34-19 victory. There would be no letdown against Tampa Bay just six days later. Neil Anderson's up the gut touchdown sealed the 20-3 victory. But suddenly the stars were unable to perform and understudies took the stage as strike rumors became a reality. Mike Ditka would make a go of it with his spare bears. It's easy to coach the, the, the guys who are tremendous stars in the league, the all pros. I mean, they don't need a whole lot of coaching. But when you take a young man, a free agent, and you watch this kid develop and grow, and, and you can see the lights going on in his head where he sees this and he sees that and he learns, that's what it's all about anyways. And now we, we just happen to have 45 guys like that. Ow! To paraphrase Kipling, if you can keep your cool when others can't, you'll make it through. The Bears did just that. Patterns became precise and receivers sure-handed. The defense played like the real thing. The Sean Paytons weren't the Walter Paytons, yet the replacement team won two of three. The strike damaged the team's continuity, but Ditka and his staff redoubled their efforts. Some say Mike Ditka is a coach who retains the competitive fire of a player. When he did play, there was none more consumed with pride and winning. In 1987, number 89 became the first and only tight end to be inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He was a bull of a blocker and a classic team player who literally ran till he could run no more. through and through but now he'd be back on the sidelines for his spare bears were gone and the regulars were back could a thoroughbred standing idle in its stall return to the race and win again 
I don't know if you can recapture it. I really don't. We're on our way to do this, and all of a sudden, we're going to take a, a six-week vacation, and then we're going to pick up right where we left off and take off again. I don't think you can do it. The starting gate flew open against the Bucks. Chicago fell, then righted itself for a daring comeback. Jack draws back, hands it off to Anderson, sweeping left, gets a block from top there, makes the turn, 35 to go, 25, 20, left side, he's going to go, touchdown! A high kick, McKinnon in his tracks to the 35, dancing to the 40, cutting right, 40, right side line, one man to beat, turning left to the 5, and it's right, goodbye, it's all right, Dennis McKinnon, touchdown! All right, go back! Jim McMahon was back, and with 128 to play, made the play that had to be made. Bears go without a huddle. Second down for the six. McMahon looks to throw. Dumps it over the middle. Anderson, he's in the end zone. The Bears won by a single point. Their last minute heroics would be repeated against Kansas City. kick returner Dennis Gentry cut back and cut into a 14-0 Chiefs lead. The defense finally corralled Bill Kenny after four scoring passes, while McMahon and Willie Goff teamed up for two fourth-quarter touchdowns and the game winner 31-28. From the 38, McMahon on the back pedal, steps up over the middle and goes. Neil Anderson scored on Chicago's first play in Green Bay, but with 56 seconds left, another miracle was required for the third straight week. McMahon battled the Packers and the clock. With four seconds left, the wind swirled across the mud, and Kevin Butler's kick would have to travel 52 yards. Out of the hole to Mike Tomczak, 52 yards. Tom Zach down to one knee, arm extended, waiting for the snap from Maddox. Here it is, the placement made, the kick by Butler. It's on no. its way to the uprights, and it is good! Oh, oh, you don't believe it! it. Oh, my God! 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 Oh, my
like the great Walter Payton. I look back at everything I've done in my life, I wouldn't change because if, if I did, I probably wouldn't be the person I am now. I'm somewhat pleased with what I am. He's a great example to young people. I mean, if you want to get to the top and, and not be satisfied at reaching the top and, and try to stay up there for a long time, I think he's the greatest example you could look at. What makes Walter so special and so unique is his genuine, complete desire of being the very best possible. history rushed for more yards. No one battered more defenders. No one performed with more class. He became the model, the prototype of excellence. marched upfield against defenses designed to stop only him. He missed just one game. Testimony of his unmatched durability. Walter Payton. He leaves with the game's records and the hearts of the game's fans. Week 10, the regulars were still undefeated. And in Denver, Jim McMahon turned in his finest performance of the year. Back to fake to Peyton, dumping the left side is McMahon. He's got his man spreading loose to the 40 on the left sideline. Will he go all the way to the end zone for the touchdown? Flip back field for Chicago. McMahon takes rolls right, being chased by Craig and throws the right side of the end zone. Touchdown! This time, there would be no McMiracle. The Bears lost. The first time they had done so in 25 starts with number nine at the helm. It was back home then for the victory over the Detroit Lions. Shotgun formation. Long takes the snap. Back pedals in the end zone. He throws the left side and a leaping attempt is fired. The defense, Neil Anderson and Dennis McKinnon sparked a 30 to 10 win and the Bears were back in stride. First down, the McMahon back to throw. Dumps it up oh, the There would be no last gasp drama needed to dispose of the Packers the second time around as Anderson and Thomas Sanders sealed an efficient and bruising 23 to 10 win. A victory in Minnesota would mean a perfect 7-0 division record and Chicago's fourth straight division title. Mike Ditka transformed the Lake Forest complex into a roller rink, dubbed the Metrodome the Roller Dome, and prompted Viking cheerleaders to don their skates. The Bears put pressure on themselves at Minnesota and welcome. Here's the step to McMahon. Rushes on. McMahon heaves it deep down the right side. Will he go out there over the shoulder? Catch. Touchdown! Chicago, the first and ten. Back to throw McMahon. Throws the left side. He's got Will he go. Spins the way to the end zone. Touchdown! A fire was stoked in the dome, and when Wade Wilson and Anthony Carter hooked up twice for scores, it threatened to rage out of control.
Mike Singletary and company quickly doused the blaze with a mighty goal line stand, leaving Mike Tomzak in relief of McMahon to face a one-point deficit with 40 seconds remaining. Tomzak takes, he's back to throw again. Tomzak fires it over the middle. He's got to come on, break the tackle. 30, 25, 20, take to the 15. He's out! He's out! The Bears were division champions. But after the win at Minnesota, a two-week slump gripped Chicago. San Francisco handed the Bears the first of a pair of losses, and the proud Bear defense was questioned. Well, I don't know whether there's problems with the defense. I don't think we felt like that we've uh, played as well as we're capable of playing all during the year. We've been spotty. We played good at times. Uh, uh, we played good in particular ball games, and uh, it hasn't been as consistent as we would like, and uh, that's a concern to us. Sacks were not a concern. The Bears led the league with 70. Richard Dent's 13 and a half were the second highest total in the NFL, while five and a half in the last four games vaulted Steve McMichael into the Pro Bowl. In his ninth season, Dan Hampton played as recklessly as his first. Al Harris pursued opponents. William Perry engulfed them. Despite a minus 20 turnover ratio, the Bears still fielded the NFL's second best defense. Otis Wilson outsacked all Bear linebackers, and Ron Rivera picked off a pair of passes. Captain Mike Singletary pounded his way to his fifth straight Pro Bowl. While all pro teammate Dave Durison led the defense in tackles and interceptions. Maurice Douglas, Mike Richardson, Todd Bell, and Reggie Phillips blasted enemy receivers. Vesty Jackson improved in his second season, while the only touchdown turned in by the defense belonged to safety Sean Gale. Chicago's defensive backfield has always been staffed by hitters. There was no room for the timid. For 12 years, Gary Fensick was a receiver's nightmare. Yale man off the field, Fensick played with vintage bear ferocity and retires as Chicago's all-time leading interceptor and tackler. was a genuine overachiever and in the season's final week he rejoined the starting defense to face the Raiders. Nine sacks later the Bears were 6-3 winners in a game dominated by the defense. The playoffs and a hard lesson lay ahead. Chicago lost and was left to ponder its fate. Defeat is either a burden or a cure, depending on the message the Bears elect to take from it. For the Bears of 1988, the message will be one of unity and purpose. That's what football is. It's an opportunity. What they do with that opportunity is entirely up to them, but it's up, up to the commitment they're willing to make. And I'm, I'm easy to get along with as long as the guy breaks his butt. When I think a guy's dogging it or taking a short way out, then he's got no way, because I never did that. And therefore, a, a guy should have no problem playing for me if he's willing to do that, and if he likes to win, because that's my only goal. And uh, we've done that, and we've done it in our style, and it's been a good style. It's been a fair, clean style of football. We play very hard, 
And I don't ever want that to change. And when I think we're not playing hard because people aren't putting out, then they're going to have a lot of problems with me. Ditka demands maximum effort, and nothing short will be accepted. They must turn it up a notch as they aim for their fifth straight division title in 1988. A year to bear down.